Welcome to Skyview Temple, the first of many in the game. Being as it is the first, it's not particularly difficult, but it'll still put many of your skills to the test. For now, work your way to the bottom of the spiraling staircase. You'll encounter some light resistance along the way in the form of bats and spiderwebs. You can slice your way through the spiderwebs, but if you do get caught up in one, you can shake free. When you reach the bottom, you'll discover a locked door. The switch is nearby, but it's guarded by a Deku Baba. Stand close to the door to aim around him with your slingshot. Now fire a seed to open the door. Once through, you'll be blocked by another door, just below a suspicious eyeball. Because the eye follows your sword, you can make it dizzy by waving the sword around in a circle while standing in front of it. This will open the way. Yeah, it's not a very good security system, is it? Now head on through into the next room. As you enter, be mindful of the Deku Babas on the ceiling and the mines on the floor. Now first things first. There's an optional shortcut you can open which connects this room to the entry stairwell. Although it won't be of use to you now, it may be in the future, so let's do this. As you step into the room, turn around to spot a vine-covered wall. Pick off the spiders with your slingshot before attempting to climb it. Once it's clear, clamber on up to a short corridor with two wooden barricades you need to slice through. And that's it, you're done, the shortcut's open. Like I said, it won't really help you now, but it might come in use in the future, and although it won't save you a ton of time, it's kind of handy to have around. Now as you step forward, you'll be surrounded by three doors. The one ahead is locked, while the two to the sides are gated. Fortunately, there's a pair of switches which will open the side doors, one of which you can see now, so let's head through the right door first. After triggering the switch, just step on through. Inside, drop to the lower floor and crawl through a small, easy-to-miss tunnel along the left wall. Once through, fire a seed at the switch high above. This will cause a water level to rise. Now climb the vines to your left and head back to the door you just came through. In order to open the other path just ahead, jump into the water and swim to a switch located just beneath the door. Activate it to release the gate. Now climb back up via the vines on the central platform and head on through. Inside, you'll find that a pair of spiders are blocking the walkway. Luckily, Link doesn't need no stinking walkways. Instead, use your slingshot to lower two curled vines hanging from the right side of the ceiling. Now carefully swing across to the other side. And luckily, the spiders are actually vulnerable from this angle. Just stab them each a couple times in their glowing sweet spot. Once you've dealt with them, head to the middle of the walkway to discover a switch along the same wall as the vines. Activate it to raise a water level one more time. Now exit the room via the staircase and not the door you came in through. Step out onto the tree branch to find a treasure chest containing the temple map. In addition, it takes on the functionality of the compass in previous Zelda games and even shows treasure chests too. In fact, it looks like there's one back in the other room, so let's go grab it. Drop to the walkway below and use a now floating log to reach the ivy covered wall along the east side. Just make sure to shoot down the spider before climbing it. Once you reach the platform, head on through the door. Here you'll have your first encounter with a free hanging spider. To get at his weak point, spin him around with a horizontal strike, then stab him in his belly when you get the chance. Once he's down, you'll find the chest is locked away behind a pair of watchful eyes. Stand far enough back so they can both see your sword as you move it in a circle to make them dizzy again. Open the now accessible chest for a small key. Yeah, you know where this goes. Take it back to the previous room and use it on the locked door along the north wall. Upon entering the large room, you'll notice a switch just above a gated door ahead. Trigger it with your slingshot and head on through. As soon as you enter, the door behind you will lock and a skeleton will spring to life. Similar to fighting the Bokoblins, it's all about hitting him at the right angle. Keep a close eye on the sword placement and strike in the direction of the opening. For example, let's take a look at this. Because he's holding his swords to the side, he's vulnerable to an upward or downward strike. Other defensive positions might have you attack either horizontally or even diagonally. Now although his attacks are powerful, he telegraphs them early, so just back away as soon as you see him winding up. He tends to attack most often as a counterattack after you swing incorrectly, so just be aware of this whenever your attack is deflected. If you do end up taking a sword to the face, he can recover some health via the heart plants around the perimeter of the room. Once you defeat him, a chest will appear containing the beetle. This flying item allows you to collect goodies and trigger switches from afar. Good timing too since you'll need it to escape this room. Fly through the hole in the wall, turn right, then ram it into the same switch you used to open the door earlier. This will open the way once again, allowing you to exit. 
Back in the central room, there's a lot of hidden goodies here that you should seek out before heading deeper into the temple. To start things off, there's a heart piece hidden behind a gate on the exact opposite side of the large central column. Use the beetle to fly up to a well-hidden switch near the top of the column. The heart piece is now yours for the taking. You can also use a beetle to cut loose three boxes hanging from the ceiling. You'll find various rupees and even a fairy inside them. You may also want to use the beetle to explore some of the various alcoves hidden in the walls, such as the two near the room's entrance which each contain a red rupee. Once you're done collecting goodies, head to the west side of the room to find a blocked door by the bird statue. Use your beetle to fly into one of the holes on either side and activate the switch within, thereby opening the way. Once passed, run through the next room and into another room ahead. Here you'll find yourself locked inside with a free roaming spider. Like the others, a weak point is on his belly. To get at it, swing upward and knock him onto his back. Then perform a fatal blow if you get the chance. With the spider down, the door will unlock, but you're not done here yet. Instead, there's a chest you need to get to, but there's a puzzle you have to solve first. Climb the vines up to the balcony, then look for a suspended box on the far side. Use your beetle to cut it down, then push it off to the lower floor. Now position it near the middle, like we have here. It needs to be close enough that all three eyes can see you when you stand on top of it. Now make them dizzy like the others by waving your sword in a circle to allow access to the chest. You'll find a small key inside. Oh, and if you need any help before leaving, there's another box you can cut down with some hearts inside. Once back in the previous area, you'll have to find a new way to get back to the central room. Start off by using your beetle to reach a switch on the far side of the second floor. This will cause a water level to rise. Now swim to the staircase and continue up to a spider web. As you slice your way through, the spider above will drop. Take him down like the others with an upward strike, then a fatal blow. Continue up to a tree wall you can cut down and crawl through the tunnel. This will drop you off by the door leading back to the central room. Now head to the opposite end to find a locked door on the eastern side. Before crossing the tightrope there, use the beetle to cut down a three Deku Baba suspended directly above the rope. Now cross on over and use your key to unlock the door. The door will lock behind you, which usually isn't a good sign. Smash your way through a pair of wooden barricades to find a three-headed snake. In order to kill it, you have to cut all three heads off at the same time. Wait for them to align and strike along that axis. If you get all three, the snake will be defeated and a nearby door will open up. Once through, follow the path up to a hanging spider. You know what to do, use the beetle to cut it down. To jump the gap and take the time to trigger a switch on the left. This simply opens a gate, creating a shortcut back to the central room. You probably won't have to use it, but it's there if you need it. Now you'll find a tide rope opposite the shortcut. But there's a bokoblin on the other side. Like the one earlier in the game, lure him onto the tide rope and shoot him off of it. After crossing the rope, you'll find a huge locked door which requires a very special type of key. So we'll be coming back to this shortly. For now, head left to find a chest containing a red rupee. and head to the opposite side and climb the vine-covered wall. After dropping onto the platform, you'll find a tied-up rope you can slice. Jump to it carefully, then swing from it to the platforms on the right. Work your way up them and follow the tree branch to the far side. From there, shoot down the two curled vines. After jumping to the first, hold B to come to a stop, then position yourself further down, otherwise you won't be able to jump far enough to reach the second vine. When you reach the chest, you'll find the golden carving inside. As you probably guessed, this is the key to that large door you saw earlier. Head back to it by climbing the vine-covered wall on the right, which will return you to the tightrope. Now approach the large door to take on one final puzzle. You have to fit the golden carving into the hole in the door, and you do this by rotating it by moving the Wii Remote. If you're having trouble, reset it to the default position by pressing the C button. Now spin it as shown here so it looks like a letter H. It'll begin to glow when you have it right. Then just press A to insert it. Now it's time to take on this temple's boss. Good luck. <laughs>